Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a brand new 2023 Ram Rebel, and today I'm gonna review it for you guys. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Lancaster, Dodge, Ram, and Fiat for allowing me to borrow this vehicle to review. For all your Stellantis needs in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area, I'll provide a link in the description below. Now, I've reviewed a lot of Ram trucks on this channel over the years, but I haven't reviewed a Rebel since probably 2019. Wow, where does the time go? Man, I'm getting old. Wait, what's the age to file for AARP? I should probably look that up. Moving to the front end, starting here with the grill. This is a unique grill to the Rebel trim, and you'll have Ram spelled out in the front here. And a unique detail I really like is this is plastic. That's to be expected. Pretty much every car's grill is plastic nowadays. But this upper portion of the bumper that blends into the grill is actually steel. I really like that Ram went the extra mile to make it that because some of the competitors probably wouldn't. I've done pretty much every truck on the market at this point, and most of the other trucks do not have that uh, little added touch. And then if we move further down, this is also steel down here, your skid plate area. You'll have tow hooks, and then moving to the headlights, you'll have full LEDs with LED daytime running lights and LED fog lights. Moving underneath the hood in the Rebel, it's powered by Dodge's old reliable 5.7 liter Hemi V8, making 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. Though this isn't any regular Hemi, it has e-torque added to it, which gives the truck an additional 130 foot-pound of launch torque as well. Moving to the profile of the Ram Rebel, starting here at the top of the hood, you'll have your 1500 badge, and a Hemi e-torque badge right next to that. And then you'll have these functional air vents which add to a really aggressive, sharp looking truck. I think this is one of Ram's best looking trucks, uh, obviously only uh, topped by the TRX in my personal opinion. And then down here you will have 275 70R Goodyear Wrangler tires around these 18 inch silver and black wheels. I love this design. I've really wanted to do something similar on my Tacoma for a while, though they don't make anything specifically like this for the Tacoma. Maybe you have a Tacoma and you happen to be watching this Rebel video and you know of uh, wheels like that. I would love to know. Uh, down here you'll have a Ram badge and then up on the mirror you will have a puddle light and a turn signal indicator. Now this particular Rebel does not have blind spot monitoring, though it does have a blind spot mirror, and it does have a heating element incorporated into the mirrors as well. Then down here you will have a uh, stationary running board. Um, there are power running boards available on the like limited trims of this truck, though power running boards wouldn't really work any better uh, on this off-road oriented truck, maybe other than the fact they fold in but that's probably a pretty pricey upcharge. And then as we move to the back here, you'll have a Ram badge on the back across the entire tailgate, Rebel right there and a four x four. You'll have dual exhaust, and then you'll also have your towing hitch. And then up here, you'll have a backup camera and the button to release your tailgate, which is dampened, that's very nice. And then you'll have a very basic drop-in bed liner right here. Obviously, spray-ins are available as well. Um, there is an option for LED lights back here in the bed, though you're not going to get that in this particular one, though there is some tie-downs, which is nice to see. And then, um, this is pretty light. You can put, well, all right, not light enough I can do it with my pinky, but light enough I could do it with my pointer finger. Maybe if I work my pinky out a little bit more, I could lift this with that. But uh, the point is, very light. Uh, tailgate to lift back Stepping up. Stepping into the incredibly red interior of this truck, let me take a moment here to highlight the key really fast. So it says Ram here on the back, then on the front you'll have lock, unlock, and panic, and then this center portion that says Ram is not a button. That's just a dummy right there. Um, pretty basic, but I do appreciate how weighty it is. That makes it feel more premium to me, so I've always appreciated that about ram keys with the uh, key in here i'm going to put my foot on the brake and tap the push button start that's going to give us a pretty cool startup screen here 
uh, that says Rebel, though nothing can touch Chevy and GMC's new startup screen that goes across the gauge cluster into their infotainment screen. Uh, what you may notice here with that startup is that this is all new in the Rebel, a fully digital gauge cluster. So pre prior to this, uh, you had two traditional gauges, your tachometer and your speedometer flanked, um, or flanking, I should say, a smaller uh, gauge cluster screen. Now it's completely digital, so that means more customization in here uh, of different things. So you get your drivetrain, your steering angle, uh, different map things you can pull up in the truck. GPS is on here now, which is incredible. I love to see navigation incorporated into a screen like this. Obviously, probably the safest way to do navigation. You're not looking over here. You're not looking at your phone if it's mounted somewhere over here. You're just looking right here, and it's basically in the center of your vision. Um, I think the only safer way would be if it was a, a HUD on the display which might already exist, I'm not 100% sure, um, or if it doesn't, it's definitely going to eventually come. I could, I could definitely say that. Um, so that's really cool. That's a um, neat um, functionality feature in there. So there's a lot of different things that you can tool around with um, in this digital screen. But let's move to the door panel really quick. Again, very red. You can see this is a soft touch material here. This is more of a rubbery soft touch material up here too, which I appreciate. Uh, moving down here, you'll have your window controls, your lock, unlock. You do have power folding mirrors, which is always really nice, especially on a bigger truck like this. You don't have to worry about um, them getting knocked off in the city. You can just tap that button, and then you do have the power adjustments there as well. Your lighting controls down here, power pedals. That's really nice, so you can push these pedals up and down to uh, bring them forward or back, so that's really nice. Electronic parking brake down here, and the dimmer for your center screen right there, or for your, sorry, I should say your gauge cluster screen right there. <clears throat> then moving to the steering wheel, it is leather wrapped, very comfortable with a heating element incorporated into it. And then you do have uh, the buttons to control the volume for the stereo back here. That's a uh, Chrysler Classic, putting it back there. Um, but it is very useful because when you're holding the steering wheel, you can just tap the buttons right there. I know I said right there quite a bit. <laughs> there is a driver's side grab handle here, which I really appreciate. Always a fan of that. And then if we move over here, you will have your 12 inch infotainment system, which is an updated version of the one originally introduced in the 2019 Ram, a little bit faster uh, UI, and there is a little bit different layout. Um, this one also has Amazon built in, uh, which is cool with Alexa, though you do need an internet connection to do that. Um, one thing I don't like in this interior is that there are not physical buttons for the heated steering wheel or heated seats. They are there, as you can see. I can tap that. That's on the screen that will start heating the steering wheel. But you have to go through the infotainment screen, which I'm just not a big fan of. I would prefer traditional buttons, though it seems like a lot of manufacturers are going that way. And the traditional buttons are going the way of the Dodo, unless it's stuff like our four-wheel drive selector down here automatic engine start stop, hill descent control, or our axle lock. And then you will have your shifter right here, which is very interesting. Uh, still kind of talking about the screen and the shifter, what you do to control it is you spin it, and then spinning that will bring it into reverse. You have a little plastic bag back there. Let's zoom in on the plastic bag. Wow, that's beautiful. And then you can zoom out, and as you turn the wheel, you uh, do not have lines that move with the truck. That's unfortunately, or sorry, I should say move with the wheel, uh, but it is a very high quality backup camera. I do appreciate that that's a little bit better from some of the outgoing Ram models. One thing I find amusing is a 360 degree camera is available for this truck, though it is not equipped on this particular one. So the backup camera only takes up half the screen and a little uh, notification that says cameras down here takes up the other half that says rear camera. Well, duh, rear camera. That's the only camera I can do. <laughs> I just think that's really funny. Um, but then down here with your shifter, you know, if you want to shift it into drive, it will shift there. It'll tell you in the screen down there. Um, and then you're off. So pretty simple design. Uh, I remember originally when this was introduced, people were very mad that this was the shifter. They're like, why don't I get my center tunnel shifter or my column shifter? I assume they sound like this. I don't know why. Um, but they're all Sam Elliott's. Everyone, 
that sounds like Sam Elliott is mad about this. Um, but the, the more that we've gotten used to it, I think the more comfortable people have gotten with the dial, though um, I can understand where they're coming from with the frustration. I would prefer a center, a center tunnel shifter too. You have to step up to the TRX now, basically, if you'd like that. Um, there is an Alpine audio system in here. There is a speaker, and there are also speakers incorporated into the door as well. Um, other things on the screen, just really quick. There's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, so a few different functionality features, obviously built-in navigation right there. So very, very functional screen, a lot quicker than the outgoing model. You can see mirror dimmer. Again, you can go to that rear view camera. They're really advertising that rear view camera. Um, but there's a bunch of different things that you can mess with in here, um, which is really useful. I think that's really neat. And then if we move down here, you'll have uh, oh traction control off and your tow haul mode. Then you'll have USBs. Interestingly, an auxiliary port is still available in this truck. Obviously, it's just a carryover from 2019 or so um, when they originally introduced it, but I can't think of many devices that would still have an auxiliary port, so I think that's very interesting. Then down here, just throw your phone in here, and uh, that's like a, a little rubberized place to put it so you don't have to mount anything elsewhere. That's neat. And then down here, you will have a household outlet. And then uh, down here, there's just, I guess, a, a little additional storage cubby I can fit most of my hand into. Um, I feel like something would slip down there, and uh, I'd forget where it is because it's it's this little this little nook down there. But, ooh, sold. Um, you can see um, there is a lot of uh, storage here. And one more cool thing is this moves. So you can uh, open that up and, and change the positioning of that with your cup holders and your coin holder. So I think that's useful. Pretty, uh, pretty uh, nice placement of that. And then you'll have the stitching that is all throughout this truck continue onto your armrest here. And then you have your big Ram logo. And then if you open this up, you can see there's more of that storage. And what's particularly cool is there's a little divider here with all the generations, or at least a few of the generations, of the 1500 incorporated there. You can fold that up. And then if we open the top part of this, you have even more storage and another USB port right there. So that's really cool. And then these seats are very comfortable, kind of a blend of leatherette and cloth. So uh, again, very red, but nice. I like them a lot. This particular one does not have a sunroof, though it does have a power sliding rear window. Always a fan of that. I would never say no to a power sliding rear window. Moving to the rear seats in the Rebel, you can see it is incredibly spacious back here. If I climb in, there is a grab handle, and then closing the door, um, you can see I probably have five or six inches, if not more, of legroom, and then I have uh, about three or four inches of headroom as well. I'm 5'9", and I sit perfectly back here. So if you are much taller than that, uh, I think you would have a very comfortable time back here as well. Then down here you have uh, climate vents and a little storage area as long as, as well as two cup holders. And then you're gonna have a fold down armrest right here with uh, more cup holders and your Alpine speakers up here continue. Really like that. This is something I am a huge fan of. If you wanna use this area for storage, all you have to do is lift this up and these seats go up. You can do that on both sides. Look, there's so much room back here. I could basically crawl around, that's incredible. Um, and you have uh, just quite a lot of room. This is weird. I'm kind of kind of half standing in the back of this Ram. Not something that I thought I would say today uh, or do, really. One more thing in the rear here I forgot to mention, uh, because the rubber floor mats are hiding them, is that there are Ram boxes back here. So if I fold that up, um, these little boxes open up uh, for more storage additionally, and what's really cool is they can be removed. I don't know exactly how to pull them out, but they can be. Yep, here we go. So you can pull these right out. So if you want to put ice in these and drinks, uh, you can kind of do storage, and then you can just remove that um, for some additional hidden storage in the truck. So I think that's really cool, and I almost overlooked that. I actually had to remember, hmm, I wonder if this has RAM boxes in the floor, um, because I know that's a feature on some of these, and it does. So... Let's take this thing for a quick drive. All right, driving the Ram 1500 Rebel, um, getting it out on the road here, gunning it. Um, it picks up pretty good. That 5.7 liter with the e-torque is nice. 
I'm going to get it on the highway and see how this thing performs. Uh, feels very commanding. I'm, I'm right behind a F-250, maybe an F-350 Platinum, and uh, I'm not as high as it is. That is really a king of the road truck, but I do uh, feel like I'm playing with the big dogs when I drive this thing. That sounds so cheesy. I'm so sorry. But um, my point being that this thing definitely uh, commands the road. A lot of great visibility out of here. The windshield on this is very nice, very wide. Um, the Toyota Tundra, the new one, definitely doesn't feel like it has as much visibility as something like this does. So I really admire it in that aspect. We're going to get it here on the highway and see how this thing opens up. So let's see the response of the 5.7. I haven't done a RAM in a little bit, so I'm interested to see how this performs. Uh, when you go through the Rolodex of cars like I do, you often forget, how does this thing handle? So here we are opening it up, gunning it. It, it, it handles pretty good. Pedal to the floor. Oh yeah, holy Toledo, this thing flies. I'm pretty impressed with this truck overall. I think my only other gripe with it would probably be the price tag. That seems to be most trucks nowadays. I wish it had LED bed lights. I wish it had a spray and bed liner and maybe an outlet in the bed for this price. But that's uh, wishful thinking, I feel like, at this point on a lot of these trucks. Um, the interior is probably more well equipped than uh, some of the other trucks in its segment. So that's going to conclude my driving segment on this Rebel. I really hope you guys enjoyed. All right, guys, that's going to conclude my review of this Ram Rebel. But before I go, I'd like to mention that I am a Christian. And if you have any prayer requests, I would love if you'd leave those in the comment section below. It's an honor to be able to pray for you guys. And lastly, I like to close out with a weekly scripture reading. This week's is Proverbs 22, 2. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Take care.